Okay, so if you are watching this, chances are you are having trouble with problems number one through four on homework 0.1. So what you are doing in this particular problem is you are evaluating a function for a specific number. So if I give you this and I say find f of negative one-third, what that really means is plug in negative one-third for x and go ahead and simplify everything, okay? You're gonna have to evaluate it. Now, the trick that I wanna give you is that when you plug something in, I'm gonna tell you time and time and time again to use grouping symbols, parentheses, when you plug in, because it's gonna help you a million, a million times over, okay? So this is just a little tip. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to this equation and everywhere I see an x, I'm gonna replace it with negative one third. So negative seven times negative one third squared plus negative one third over two minus five times negative one third. Just to be clear, all I did is replace these x's with my negative one third, okay? And now it's a fraction that you can rely on your calculator, but when you go to take the SAT, you're not going to be able to use your calculator, so it's not a good idea. So let's look at this. What I have here is negative 7. Now, if I didn't use this, these grouping symbols, I might not realize this inside here, when I square it, it's going to become positive 1 ninth. Plus, I've got negative 1 third divided by 2. And then I look at this one, this is 5 over 1, so I'm going to multiply negative 5 and negative 1, that's going to make that plus positive 5 thirds. Now, i got a couple different things going on here in terms of looking at this problem. First of all, here, this one's going to be pretty easy, multiplying straight across, straight across, negative 7 ninths. But this right here, this is a complex fraction, a fraction within a fraction. So let's come over here and let's work on that just to talk about it for a minute. So I have negative one third over two. So there's a couple different ways I can deal with this. I can look at the denominator here and I can multiply by three over three and change the way this looks. This is kind of like a three over one and that will cancel and will give me a negative one sixth. Now, that's gonna be the answer, but there are multiple ways to deal with this. So first, I could multiply by whatever's in the denominator over one over itself, or I could think of this as one third divided by two. Go back to when you were in grade school and you learned how to divide fractions. Think of that as negative one third divided by two. So remember how when I write 2, it's 2 over 1. So I could rewrite this as negative 1 third times 1 half. Remember when you are dividing fractions, what you're doing is you're multiplying by the reciprocal. You flip the second one. So then this becomes negative 1 sixth. So you guys, no matter which way I simplify this, I'm going to get the same answer. I have to. But there's different ways to get there. So I'm in the middle of this problem. All of that was just to get this part here. Plus negative one-sixth plus five-thirds. Now I need to get a common denominator. I've got ninths, sixths, and thirds. So I'm going to turn each of those into eighteenths. So my common denominator is going to be eighteen. I'm going to multiply by two over two, by three over three, and by six over six. This is going to give me negative 14, this is going to give me negative 3, and this is going to give me a positive 30. Now that I have a common denominator, I'm just going to combine these things. So negative 14 and negative 3 is negative 17, plus 30 is positive 13 thirtieths. And there we are. So what was the hard part here? Probably the negative when you squared it and then this number the coefficient was also negative when i got done that turned out to be negative so remember when you're plugging things in to use grouping symbols